Hi everyone, Grant K here for the Flame Premium Learning Channel. In the previous sessions, we have covered a variety of stabilizing techniques such as point stabilizing, auto stabilize, and planar stabilization. Now, all these methods are very powerful and can be used to solve a multitude of problems. If these don't work for your particular case, there is another stabilization method you can try. If the shot in question is a track or dolly move, you can use 3D tracking to analyze the shot and then stabilize it using the Action 3D cameras and projections. This is based on the idea of using object distance in Z-space to stabilize the image. Now, this idea was first shown a few years ago by flame artist Alan Natiri. The flame family has developed somewhat since then, so we'll look at this workflow with the current release. Please be aware that like all stabilization methods, results will vary depending on the context and how it was shot. If you would like to follow along, please click the link in the YouTube description to download the media. Alternatively, if you're watching the podcast version of this video, then type the link displayed in your web browser. Starting off in batch, set the duration to 72 frames and please connect the source clip into a new media input of an action node. When you go into the action, use a dual screen split for the action schematic and result view. Now delete the image and access objects which are automatically added. The first step in this workflow is to perform a 3D track. So switch to the action bin menu and select the media assigned to input 1. In the node bin, double click on the analyzer mono node to set the 3D track. Ensure you have the schematic on the left viewer. Hovering over the right viewer, you can press F7 to toggle to the 3D analyzer mono view. Now double click on the analyzer mono node to bring up its controls. To perform the 3D track, set the camera settings to free 3D motion. Also set camera solving to track forward and backward. Now click Analyze. The 3D track begins and will solve the camera when it reaches 100%. Now let's have a look at the 3D point cloud from a third person perspective. Press the Space F7 keyboard shortcut to display the analyzer working view. To move around the point cloud, press O to switch to orbit. As you move around the view, you should be able to make out the 3D features of the image. Now, I don't want the point cloud to be so spread out for this example, so switch to the fine tuning menu. Set the scale to 200%. This doesn't change anything from the camera's perspective, but it does adjust the distances between the points to make them more manageable for the shot. Now let's identify two points on the image that could be stabilized. Hover over the analyzer working view and press F7 to go back to the 3D analyzer view. Let's create a locator for the screen and then the wall. Hold Ctrl and select the tracker box on the screen. Under the output header, click Create Locators. This plots the screen's locator in 3D space within action. Next, hold CTRL again and select a point on the outside wall. And as before, click Create Locators to plot the wall points in 3D space. So you've done a 3D track and plotted two coordinates in 3D space for a potential stabilization. Let's see what we get in the main compositor. Select the right viewer and press F4 for the result view. You are currently looking through the default camera and not the 3D tracking camera. So double click on the camera 3D node and change the result camera from default cam to camera 1. You should now see the image and two locators in the scene. Now select the action schematic and press Alt T to tidy the nodes. If you don't want to see the icons for the default camera, select the node and hide it with the H keyboard shortcut. Now let's look at these locators in 3D space. One represents the screen and the other the wall. If you select the result view and press SHIFT 4, 
you can look at the top view of the 3D scene. The locator closer to the camera is the screen, and the locator further away is the wall. If you don't see the second locator, just zoom out. Now to apply the stabilization, we'll use a surface object and projection. These tools, in conjunction with locators, will allow you to stabilize objects in the image based on their 3D space. This is not something you do with the other stabilization techniques. So let's create a surface object to receive the projection. This can be any geometry, including a 3D shape, but you'll just use a color source for now. Swipe back to the batch schematic. In the batch node bin, drag out a color source node. Select the action node and add a new media input with Ctrl N. Just connect the front input. Now go back to action and the dual viewers. Looking at the top view, I would like to stabilize the screen in the image. Now, in order for the stabilization to work correctly on the screen, the surface object needs to be at the same point in Z space as the screen's locator. So you can hold Shift and snap the surface object to the locator. Now press F4 to return back to the result view. So this white surface is directly in front of the camera. Let's create a camera projection with a diffuse map on this surface. Ensure you select the surface object in the schematic. Switch to the node bin menu and select the original image in input 1. Find the diffuse map node and drag it into the schematic. It should attach itself to the selected node. Now the white surface object is just being textured with this image. This is not yet a projection. So double click on the diffuse map node, change the mapping from wrap to projection. Now set the projection source to originally come from the 3D track camera, which is camera 1. When you scrub the time bar, you will notice the image axis locked onto the screen's locator. The final part to stabilize the image is to choose a reference frame to stabilize. Go more towards the end of the shot for a straight screen. In order to perform the 3D stabilization, we need to duplicate the tracked camera and lock the duplicate to this frame. Select the camera 3D node and press Ctrl D to duplicate it. This duplicate is the stabilizing camera and camera 1 is the projection camera. You can rename the nodes if that helps you remember. Next, double click on the new camera and change the result camera to view through camera 2. If you scrub through the shot again, nothing has changed with the motion. However, everything is now set up to stabilize the shot. In order to do this, you need to lock the camera to the chosen frame. So you want to use this current frame as the reference frame to stabilize the shot. Select camera 2 and switch to the animation menu. If you don't see your camera, press Shift Tab to frame the selected object and its channels. For complete stabilization of the screen, we only need to keep the keyframe of the current frame and ditch the rest. So with the positioner on the current keyframe, click the key button to the right of the screen. Every keyframe is deleted off this camera except for the current one under the positioner. Now if you scrub the positioner, you can see that the screen is more or less stabilized and everything else is moving in the scene. This is what you would expect. But let's say you wanted to stabilize the wall instead. We'll use the same reference frame on the stabilization camera to keep things simple but you can easily undo the keyframe deletion and choose another frame. So exit the animation editor and switch the result view back to the top view with Shift 4. Now you can pick up the surface object and move it over to the other locator with the controls. Remember that you can snap to the locator with Shift and drag. So the surface object with its projection are now at the wall's position in 3D space. Press F4 for the result view and scale the image until it goes beyond the camera frame. 
Now, if you scrub the time bar again, you will notice how the wall is now stabilized and not the screen. So, depending on the 3D tracked locators and the projected surface's object's distance to the camera will determine what you stabilize. This is quite cool, but at the moment, we are stabilizing based on a frame and not actually smoothing out the camera movement. If you want to smooth out the camera move rather than a locked stabilization, you need to go back to before deleting the camera's keyframes. Repeatedly press undo until the camera 2 keyframes reappear. Now select the camera 2 node in the schematic and switch to the animation editor. So deleting all the keyframes in the camera with the exception of the current frame locks the stabilization to a particular frame. But to smooth out the camera move, switch to the average math operation. By sliding the value, you can average out all the camera animation curves, which in turn will smooth out the camera motion. There is no defined value to use, just tweak it until you're happy. When you scrub the time bar, the camera move will still be present, but the move will be smoother. To hide the black edges as a result of the stabilization, double click on the axis of the diffuse map. Just by scaling it up slightly will hide the edges. Go ahead and render the result. So here is the final result without the harsh motion. Unfortunately, it will not solve issues like camera weave and blur, but it will certainly help smooth out the camera move. Here is a before and after comparison of what was done through the course of this video. So that's performing stabilization with the 3D compositing tools in action. And once again, special thanks to Alan Natiri for his contribution. Comments, feedback, and suggestions are always welcome and appreciated. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe to the Flame Premium Learning Channel for future videos.